Hey, Mariner fans, welcome back to week, what are we at, 22? 22. 22, let's go 22. Uh, to Monday Mojo, I'm Max Schwabi, here with Chris Soba, Chris Weifel, and Evan Barron. We have a lot to unpack this week, uh, not just for the M's, but just in baseball. Uh, in general, just given the trade deadline, uh, trade deadline, we've got a lot of big moves and a lot of big names to look out for. As for the Mariners' performance this week, didn't go as planned, but we had some big moments to highlight, which we're going to ju- uh, d- uh, jump into. Welcome to Monday Mojo. What are we talking about? <laughs> Love it. Dude, what a, uh, I mean, just first of all, I mean, jam packed week of baseball. Um, like you said, Max, not the best things for the Seattle Manners in terms of the wins and losses. But with that being said, first thing to talk about is the Kendall Graven trade. Um, I guess the, I mean, just the timing of it was absolutely horrendous in every fan's aspects, even fan, people who aren't fans of the Seattle Mariners, from their point of view, it was an awful timing. I mean, we have the best win we've had the most clutch win we've had since 2016 against the Padres when we came back down from like 12 to two, we were down like 10 runs, but for us to be able to come back against the Houston Astros in that Monday game, starting the, starting the game with uh, down six zero and we ended up scraping it back. And I mean, I was like, I was literally on my knees praying in that ninth inning in my house, right behind where I'm sitting right now, praying to God, something crazy would happen. Ty Prentice gets that single gets a guy on board. And then we had uh, uh, Cal Raleigh got struck out. Uh, Jared Koenig, he takes a walk. Tom Murphy takes a walk. And Demo comes on in a 1-1 count. Uh, hits an absolute moonshot. No doubter for a grand salami. I mean, I don't want fans to forget about that night and, that, and the emotions Seattle was feeling. Everybody on the team and everybody watching the team from uh, as us fans, that was the coolest moment this year we've had without a doubt. And uh, it just goes to show that that's been Mariners baseball to where they don't give up and they continue to play until the game's over. Um, I mean, just what a good game. And so I don't want people to forget about that. With that being said, the following day, me, Max, and wife, we all got our tickets. We're uh, we're in my apartment and we're getting ready for the game, having a few drinks beforehand. And my buddy Jack comes over and he says, "Kendall Graven just got traded." And we're uh-huh. like, "All right, what the hell are you talking about? Bullshit!" Like we, I, I would know this before you. Uh, he was listening to the radio on his way here, and that happened. Kendall Graven got traded, um, and so did Rafael Montero. We got Joe Smith, who I don't know anything about he's the pitcher and then abraham toro and abraham toro has been going off for us so far in his first five games he's got nine hits i mean his first at bat he had a pinch hit a home run in the ninth inning um he he's good he's good uh he's been highly coveted by the entire mlb people were hitting jerry up after we made that trade to try and get toro but toro is in the kind of that long-term plan uh for the mariners and i guess like the timing of that trade, as I was saying, it, it sucks. But from what I was reading and where Jerry was coming from, Houston wasn't going to do the trade unless we made it that day for a, a number of reasons. The first reason they wanted to make that trade specifically before they left Seattle because Ken O'Graven is not vaccinated. And so if they made the trade after Houston leaves Seattle. Kendall Graven has to fly commercial. Therefore, he has to go on COVID protocol and be 10 games. He has to sit 10 games out to sit in quarantine. Uh, And so they weren't about to let that happen. And also they wanted Rafael Montero. Don't know why they wanted him so bad, but one of the pieces in that trade was him. And there that day, Monday was like the last day that we had to, because we DFA'd him designated for, for assignment. And we had that day left to trade him else. Um, I believe he'd go into free agency or you know the, the logistics, I guess, behind that. But the timing was, I guess, all that being said was kind of the reason why Jerry put that trade in action when he did absolute dagger to the emotions in the clubhouse after the best game we've had all season. And they went from hundred to zero real quick. Um, but so I find, I know you got some, some input on, on that as well. Well, yeah, I mean, understandably the air was sucked out of the clubhouse. I mean, like you said, we just had our, uh, you know, biggest win of the year that Monday night and, uh, everyone's riding high and we're one, one game out, I believe at that point of the wild card, um, and then we trade a guy like Graveman, who's not only the uh, lockdown closer, but he's also uh, a fan favorite, or not a fan favorite, but a clubhouse favorite. And um, so, you know, the timing was was uh, really the thing that I think 
uh, really made it so um, hard for everyone to swallow. I mean, losing him anyways would have been, would have been bad, but to see him just go over to the, to the dugout on the other side and, and start, uh, you know, warming up against you, we, we never uh, faced him, but I, I mean, the, uh, the fact that he's on the other team now trying to beat you, I think just kind of crushed the guys, but I mean, uh, to look at it, you know, more pragmatically, it's uh, we're trading away a guy who um, probably is only going to would have pitched, you know, 20 to 25 innings for us before he becomes a, a free agent. And we get a guy like Toro who uh, is coming in and we're going to have him for four years in a, in a spot that we need. We need a, a second baseman. We're going to need a third baseman because we're probably not going to re, uh, re-sign Seager. So, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And then the Montero thing, as you said, and then as far as the Joe Smith uh, return, getting Joe Smith back, I mean, the guy is probably a – top 20 um, relief pitcher the last 10 years. And then he had, he's just been really bad this year. So you get him away, you know, you get him on a new team and hopefully he can turn it around. I mean, he's got that uh, sidearm funky delivery. So um, there could be something there and he's pitched two innings with us. Hasn't given up anything yet, but I mean, as far as the deal goes, um, Jerry also said that the deal would make a lot more sense. Um, It didn't quite make sense in a vacuum because we're, losing our closer with no one else coming in well then what do you do then he went out and made a trade with uh the Rays to get Diego Castillo uh, who uh is going to be under contract for what three years Mm -hmm. two years and he's younger and um he actually has a better track record uh than than Graveman does so you know I think overall and then uh add on that we added in Tyler Anderson for not very much to overall the deadline I think we made our uh, MLB team slightly better, but I do have a little bit of problem with what happened. Um, I wouldn't give Jerry a complete knock it out of the park grade because I think the teams that we're competing with for the wild card got a lot better. And it's not just about what we added. It's about what everyone else added. And those teams got a lot better. And we, yes, we, we kind of made a sideways move where we're building for the future and we made ourselves a little bit better in this season, but they got a lot better, and I. it's going to be tough to make the playoffs now, in my opinion. I agree. I think it was one of those things where we, we, we were trading to I, – I, I agree. I think we were trading for long term. I don't think we were trading to actually make an impact this season. I think when I, when I look at the results of uh, the folks that we got, it was, yeah, I think these are guys that we can grow and can be fruitful for us in the long run. But are we confident about making the playoffs this year? Not necessarily. It would be nice, but not necessarily. That is in our pr- priority number one. And it gets me thinking, why the hell not? Well, that for first thing first, every single fan of the Seattle Mariners and every logical person coming into this year, we all knew that we weren't probably probably we're not going to make the playoffs this year. And I love and I get where people are coming from, like with the momentum that we had people's minds got changed. People's minds thought, you know what, actually we do have a chance this year. And if we wanted to make that big push, we were going to have to do what Jerry said all along of what he hasn't wanted to do, which would be give up those top, top prospects, George Kirby, Emerson Hancock, some of those other guys. And that's who teams were asking for. Teams knew the depth of the farm system that we had, and they know the pressure Jerry's under to, to get this team to the playoffs. And so they were trying to utilize that against him to make these trades and get really lucrative guys back. And if we weren't going to give them those guys, they were basically pushing us to the side saying, screw you, then I'll deal with somebody else, which is kind of what happened. And the teams that you're, Max, you're talking about, the Yankees getting Rizzo um, and, uh, and Joey Gallo, they got a lot better. Um, the Dodgers, I know that's National League. Max Scherzer and Trey Turner, obviously a lot better. And the teams that all did get a lot better than us, even if we made a big trade, they're still going to be better than us. We're still, if we were to still make the playoffs, we would make it as the second wild card team, probably to get knocked out within the first or second round. And then we go nowhere. And so, yeah, that would break, that would break the playoff drought. But we're, what Jerry's been doing all along, sticking to his plan, is – continuing to build for the future. He built for a little bit for now, as you said, it's not going to be a huge impact with Toro. Maybe he can go off, but 
I mean, he's building for now a little bit, but mainly, as he's been saying, to continue progressing and be dominant next year and the following years after with more years to come. And so the trades that he made, like, I get it. I, I like them. I think that they're good moves. And, I mean, we weren't going to keep Graven no matter what. Graven had been – has he's 30 years old, having the best – for half of his career ever except for the best first half second half whatever it is half of his career this year with the seattle mariners and other than that he hasn't been that good and so with diego castillo as his wife was just saying i mean that guy's coming in he's 27 years old he's got 14 saves and a 272 era this year with a 30 almost a 34 percent strikeout rate uh he's got experience in the playoffs when he he knocked the yankees out he knocked him out um to in the alds to go to the world series He's got that track record with him too. And being young, um, I, I like it. It sucks that the timing of it happened the way it did, but uh, I mean, I'm okay with it. I mean, uh, yeah. Something that I had written down here is that, you know, it's just like what's been throwing or what's been thrown around. Isn't the burials or, or uh, the burials trade. Like you're saying that is, they're asking for way too much. They asked for Hancock and then they were they were thrown in like Kelnick or, and and Rodriguez and obviously I don't want to do that but there is this like sentiment going around that we would have to it's like we don't want to do these trades because we're going to um, completely deplete our farm system and I'm looking at the Yankees trade for Gallo they traded 14 15 23 and 28 their prospects our 14 15 23 and 28 prospects are Joey Gerber Sam Carlson Milkar Perez and Christian Cardoza would you trade that for Gallo? I definitely would. 9-10, they traded for Rizzo to the Cubs, and the Cubs are pay, uh, paying his salary. Who's our 9-10? Zach Deloach and Aaron Fuller. I'm not saying that that's completely how it – or not. Uh, that's not 9-10. Uh, our 10 is uh, one thin. So Zach Deloach and one thin. And I'm not saying that's how it completely works because maybe they, they're not interested in our ninth guy, but they're interested in the Cubs' ninth guy. The Cubs are paying Rizzo's salary. I mean, there were deals to be had. Another one with the Giants. Giants uh, trade their ninth best prospect and 30th best prospect to get Bryant. I mean, there was deals out there where we wouldn't have had to give up these, you know, no- Noel de Marte, Julio Rodriguez, uh, right. these big, big names. I would have liked to see Jerry do a little bit of something, especially yeah. because the teams around us got a lot, a lot better. I mean, the Blue Jays added Barrios. The Yankees added two guys in the middle of their lineup. And, I mean, I don't see – there's no way we're, we're – I don't. I don't think there's a way that we're beating the Yankees out yeah. for a spot. Yeah. I well, think I would agree. I, I would agree, and maybe that was Jerry's master plan. If that's the case, that really does sting. Um, and you know, as a GM, I'm sure that you do have to. God, I wish he would get on the show. As a GM, <laughs> I'm sure he would. Um, I'm sure he's thinking long term, right? Like that is his job. But at the same time, we no, you're positive. He's thinking long term, positive. Right, right, right. But here's the thing: we've discussed this many times on the show. It's his time is running out, so to speak. So, I, I, I think we should have been more aggressive with with our trade. Like, we were, we we have been in it, and these boys have been fighting their asses off to be in it, to be where they are right now. And I think with you know, the acquisitions made by our made com- main competitors, the, the Blue Jays, the, the Yankees, I, I think we're in deep shit now. And, uh, you know, especially after this week, it's like it's easy to be pessimistic after losing a series to the Astros and losing the series to the goddamn Rangers. <laughs> God damn I mean, it, dude. I, I, the, these are and, you know, we can get to that it, momentarily, but I, 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 I have to think that Jerry DePoto might be scratching his head right now. There's no way he scratches his head. No way he's, just, he's regretting his choices. He he knew what he was doing and and he did I, it. But I don't want to take it too far. Overall, I give him a like what B minus C plus. Like I think I, I'm happy we got out of there without doing anything stupid like trading away a, a Noel de Marte or a George Kirby or Hancock. I'm happy we didn't do that. I just think there was a little bit of meat left on the bone. I I don't know why we still have Taylor Chamel. I I think he's our number eight prospect. He could have fetched us back something. He's our number eight. Look, I mean, the Giants gave up their number nine, and we have a better prospect uh, far, or a farm system than the Giants. What if you gave them Trammell and, uh, you know, one of these uh, prospects lower down on there, and you get Bryant? Yeah, he's not club control. He's, he's going to be a free agent. But, you know, I'm willing to risk Taylor Trammell for that. And we don't know that he didn't risk it. We don't know that he didn't offer no, we that, don't. right? Yeah, I know. But talking, talking I, I, trade, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. But I also do want to say one thing. 
all fans have been having such a close eye on the trade deadline, been refreshing their phones every five minutes, seeing what the hell's happened. What's going on? Is anything big coming through? When's the last time you were that genuinely interested in what the hell was going on at that trade line? Because you thought that there could be a potential big impact for our ball club, the Seattle Manners. I can't tell you when that last time was. It, it's it's been a while. But it's been a long while since we've been this curious. Totally. And, 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 that, and the, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. That It is reassuring to have that enthusiasm and mentality going into you know directly after the the you know post all-star break but again i'm i'm walking away because i invested so much time in in kind of we i mean we've break broken down a lot of different scenarios especially in our group chat and to walk away with who we did I, you know yeah it, and- I, it, it is it is a curse of being a mariners fan too because we want it all and we want it right now but i you know I, I can't, I'd be lying if I said I was frustrated with um, the trade results. However, Toro has been going off. Hopefully this isn't short term, but looking at his statistics uh, coming in, at least from this season, I, you know, I wasn't impressed. We don't need another sub 250 bat, uh, batter, but then again, I think he, he's here. He's um, ready to make a difference and, and hopefully make a push. Um, Anderson. Uh, the new pitcher, I am excited about him. He was playing for a shitty team, and I think he does have command. Um, he seems to be a real straight shooter on the mound, um, not really taking any shit. So he has a funky. He kind of has a funky. Yeah, he has a uh, funky wind pitching up, his yeah. delivery. And I, I was uh, watching the game the other night, and they said that uh, since June, his fastball has like uh, one of the best. Um, or lowest, which is good, uh, barrel percentage again. So yep. guys, aren't, guys aren't squaring them up. Um, and it, I think it is because of that funky uh, kind of delivery he has. And I think that was, I mean, the Toro trade is probably the best trade, but we did have to give up, you know, a, a, a nice piece. That right. Pittsburgh sure. trade is kind of like these trades, these other trades that I was talking about, where we gave up low-end prospects and got a fifth starter. Like, yeah. That's a that's a really good move, a strong move. I haven't like I think that was Jer- one of Jerry's best moves for sure. Or the Diego Castillo moves, another one we haven't really talked about. Um, uh, Joe Doyle was saying uh, Austin Shinton. He wouldn't have given up Austin Shinton for Cal Hendricks, a uh, you know pretty big name. It's kind of hard to compare a uh, starting pitcher with a high salary to a closer with a low salary, but we did use Austin Shinton and uh, got ourselves our closer for the probably the next two, three years. I, I mean, it's, I, I'm bummed that we, that we lost on Austin Shenton just cause he's been tearing it up. Um, but I mean, as you're saying, like, it's kind of, I, I think that this is a decent, a decent trade at the end of it. Like you're saying, we have him locked up for a number of years now, three plus. And he, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about him. And like, I know I, we did talk about him a little bit, you know, saying the, the history and the playoffs that he has and now he's only 27 years old. Um, I mean, his first outing, he had a perfect ninth inning. We beat the Rangers on, on Friday and that was with Logan Gilbert starting. Who's continuing to dominate love, love what we're seeing from Logan. Um, but then the next, uh, the next game we pitched him out again and he gave up two runs, one on un, one unearned one earned. And uh, that was without recording an out to blow his uh, the third save of the season in extra innings. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is, but at the end of it, like I said, I'm okay with where we're at. Fair enough. Um, one thing I, I do want to transition into is perhaps something uh, definitely on a lighter note to discuss, which is, and we had touched on it briefly, but the dopamine rush that we all got when we watched uh, Demo hit that grand slam in the bottom of the eight. I, you know, I, I do catch a fair amount of uh, M's games, despite what our listeners may think about um, the podcast. Every time I'm watching a game and my sister or my friends are watching me watch a Mariners game and they're like, oh, do you have to watch every single one because of it's your job or something? I'm like, I mean, not necessarily. Um, yeah, but, you're uh, wrong, but- yeah, yeah, I digress. But it, it, I just so happened to turn on the Mariner game on, what was it? A, a fur, no, it was a Monday, Monday night. Monday, Monday yeah. night. Monday night, the first game of the first game of three against the Astros. And I turned it on in the bottom of the eighth because I had just gotten back from um, I, I can't even remember what I'm doing. It's way too long ago, six days ago. It's pathetic. But I was I watched Ty France get on base 
and I watched, you know, those two outs happen and I, and I watched them kind of move around the bases and I haven't felt that high on dopamine in quite some time. And, you know, at the end of the day, it does go to show, and, and you guys can attest to this. This is why we do this podcast um, because of moments like that. But, you know, it, it is, it, it is upsetting because moments like that should be a catalyst for a shit ton of momentum moving forward. And it, and, and, and it, and it made it all the better with where we're sitting in the wild card right now. But, you know, it, it's, it's frustrating to see Kendall go. And, you know, I've obviously he was uh, upset about it too. Um, and then, you know, today on Sunday, we're coming at you on August 1st, the Sunday game against uh, the Rangers, we left 10 folks on base. Uh, and a lot of that, we were hitting the ball on the button and a lot of baseball or baseball is oftentimes about luck, but we've, we've got to see more from our, from our batters. And this is a very, very important road trip that we're on. Yeah. we got a big road trip coming up. I mean, in those last two games against the Rangers are against the worst pitching staff in the MLB with the Rangers, we scored a combined seven runs. I mean, that's, that's not going to get it done. Um, sometimes it can with the, with our pitching and bullpen, but it didn't and not taking away. Like, you know, I know, I know, uh, Eric Swanson did blow the save and, I mean, he's been, he's had a sub one ERA all season. I don't know what it's at after the game today, but he's been dominant all season. And so that was, I'm not going to call it a fluke, but you know, those games are going to happen. One thing I did also see Swanson tweeted out that like, I don't, I don't understand what it is with some fans, but he tweeted out like, Hey, like I know like today was on my loss is on me. The loss is on me. It's all my fault. Uh, but more fans going into his DMs, his wife's DMs saying, I'm going to kill you. And I'm there talking shit. Yeah, just saying some nasty stuff to him. Literally saying, like, I'm going to kill you. I'm like, this is what I expect from Yankee fans. This is what I expect from Red Sox fans. Like, chill the hell out. Every single one of you are probably cursing at him and saying this stuff are ones that were saying we weren't going to make the playoffs this year. And so, like, all right, you know, you said it. You're right. You're right. We're probably not going to make the playoffs. And, like, now I'm less confident about that than I was, especially before the trade deadline. But, you know, I'm still going to be watching every game. I still love this team, and I still have belief in what's going to be happening with years to come. But b- bottom line, fans can't be doing that shit. Come on. Like, we're better than that. And that shit kind of that, that pissed me off. It pissed me off that we see that. I mean, I, even if he was, like, a Montero level bad, like, you, you can't <laughs> you can't be uh, in people's – dms doing death threats but the the thing is is like you said he's been really good for us and um you know i, I kind of wonder it's it's hindsight and it's always 2020 but you, you kind of wonder could you have thrown diego again um no the dude's 250 pounds that would be going three days in a row he yeah but he just, didn't really it, pitch that much yesterday it, dude he really but he's, he's, he's 250 pounds he's a big guy like his know, stamina is not there does does well, weight have really anything to do with throwing two pitches the, the day before and then coming in to was it, he only he only threw two pitches the day before not, not two pitches but I like, mean he, he didn't record a very out. small he, handful yeah he, he faced two batters didn't record an out I mean he probably threw no more than t- nine pitches ten pitches uh, I don't think there was any chance we were throwing him today especially with the series that we got coming up no uh, I, I, uh, I get it but I wonder as fans if we do, we overdo that a tiny bit it's like he threw nine pitches like. He can't go the next day. Does that just completely wipe you out? You you have to take the next day off. Like, yeah, he pitched. He pitched the day before, and then he pitched nine pitches. But we need you right now, and you're our closer. And uh, you know, you see what happens when you you put a guy in who's not a closer. He, he, you know that those last three outs seem a little bit tougher. Um, you know, but again, hindsight's uh, twenty twenty, and I, I don't like to to. Uh, overreact too much when another team does something well to win a game like you know other teams are going to have walk-offs we 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 have had a lot of them and you know that's just how baseball goes you're going to win some like that but you're going to lose a fair amount like that as well uh yeah it just no. sucks that the, it just sucks that the two walk-offs happen consecutive days in a position that we're at right now yeah. and by the same batter yeah and by the same batter and um i guess to to even it out Kendall Graveman gave up a walk off to him earlier this year too, to that same batter. What? Yeah. So that's all right. <laughs> I mean, just kind of some food for thought there. Who is I this got, guy? Dude? I don't know, but he's some got the skinny, scrawny dude. He's got the Mariners number. Yeah, um, shit. So, you know, uh, can't say that Kendall Graveman would have done better because he has not, he has given him uh, a walk off. So some food for thought there. 
But um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, like shit, it kind of, it's tough where we're at right now. But we're still gonna be staying up to date on these boys. I ain't I ain't losing too much belief. I'm a little bit down in the dumps, if you want to say about where we're at and where we could be at. But that also is, as we said earlier, what happened with the rest of the league. The rest of the league went absolutely off. The big spenders spent. They spent, and I mean, there was no chance the Mariners were going deep into the playoffs. And I'm not gonna trade. I don't want to trade a one playoff appearance a one game playoff appearance for those big prospects and potentially impact and hurt our abilities in the years to come no i I definitely agree with that uh what about these next two series coming up i mean they're you could you could make the claim that they're the biggest of the uh of the year thus far because we have every every series every series from here on out i feel like like i was saying i mean you know for the year that oakland series was the biggest and then the astros come in and well you know this could be the biggest but uh you know, if you if you don't perform well on this uh, six game, is it six games? Three against the Rays, three against the Yankees, four against the Yankees. Yeah, so you got seven games. I mean, if you, I'm, if I'm you, scared uh, shitless. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm scared shitless. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, so <laughs> I'm nervous, man. Of, of going there. Uh, I mean, yeah. If if you don't perform well, I mean, now you're looking at we're only six games above 500 right now. So if mm-hmm. we let's just say, and I mean, fingers crossed. Hope this doesn't happen. But let's just say we go two and five on the road trip. Oh my god! Yeah, I we're mean, screwed. We're screwed. Yeah, no, we're yeah, yeah, we're yeah. yeah, we're screwed. And I mean, the season is 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 uh, likely uh, slipping away from you. Do you Especially do you think if, do you do you think if we do catch ourselves like you know going down a landslide towards the end of the season, uh, right? Hypothetically, uh, do you see us? Well, I, I guess we wouldn't, right? Because the trade deadline's gone. I'm just wondering, you know, if there's any other moves that we would make if we finally, you know, if we find ourselves in a situation where we're no longer in contention. What moves? Could, there's, I don't think there's any moves we could make. Yeah. Other, I, other I, than just trying to get these young guys more at bats. Right, um, right. But also, Jared Kelnick. He's been doing well in the middle of the in the middle of the series. Uh, I think it was the Monday game against the Astros. Jared Kelnick switches his batting stance. As we said a little bit ago, he'd been kind of rocking back and forth with, with his shoulders a little bit hunched, hunched over, over, hunched yeah. over in the box, like trying to get smaller maybe. I don't know, but he's, he switched it mid-game, and that's when he got the, the opposite, opposite field single and two runners came in. Opposite. Um, yeah. Uh, words are hard. But um, he changed the batting stance. He's been knocking the ball over. He's been doing well. He had that three-run jacker against, uh, against the Rangers, which went – just went fucking far, man. I mean, that was a bomb. Um, and his swing's looking better. He, he's making solid contact and he's getting on base. He's taking walks, which I mean, for anybody in a slump, if you see them starting to take more walks, that means they're getting a better look at the at the ball. And his homer, also, I do want to point out, was against a left-handed uh, pitcher who he who he's been getting dominated by the entire year. He can't he couldn't hit left. He can't hit left-handed pitching. I'm not gonna say he can yet, but he's doing better. He's gotten a better eye, staying away from that sweeping slider, that breaking ball, going low and away from him. And he's not he's not swinging at it. And so I'm liking what I'm seeing from from Jared. And if he can continue to stay hot and can continue to developing in a much better way than he has been because he hasn't been developing much. I'm excited to see kind of what he can do to finish out this year. Yeah. Can I I just another rant that I have is like that listening to uh, other podcasts, mostly, you know, Seattle sports radio and then, um, you know, talking to uh people just about the Mariners is like people give up on these prospects so quickly, man. Like, like, uh, you know, uh, I was listening to the Seattle radio and it's like, has Jared Kelnick shown us anything to, to prove that he's going to be uh, uh, any type of impactful bat next year? And it's like, well, I guess not, but like, why are we even having this conversation? Like he's, he's struggling. Sure. Like he's trying to figure it out. He's 21 years old. And like, dude, th- this is what, we you should have expected when a guy comes up like maybe he's a little bit underperforming but like my expectations when he came up was he'd be like a 230 hitter have a tiny bit of pop and like try to figure some things out if he would have done better than that i wouldn't have immediately assumed that he's he's going to be an all-star and because he's doing worse than that i'm not assuming that he's this like bust that people are throwing out it's just like dude if you guys never watched a baseball season before, have you never seen a prospect come up? Mike Trout came up and got sent down, man. Like that's the best player in baseball. Like we're talking about a young, young kid. And 
you know, let him grow, let him develop. We just, see, like you said, he made an adjustment and now he's hitting the ball better. He's going to make more adjustments. I think a lot of it has to do with just the impatience around oh, yeah. our, our fan base, right? Um, hey, how, how about on Tuesday with Jared, though, on, on the defensive side of things? We were, yeah. we were at that game on Tuesday and there's a rope hit to left center field. Jared Kellenick sprints, makes a dive and stop, goes full Superman, dives and catches the ball, pops up quick as shit and throws out the guy who was on second base going to third. He throws him out and gets the double play. Um, that was, what was the, what was the better play? Uh, the one that you just mentioned or the one that Demo made against Texas where he also a double that? play. That yeah. was, uh, yeah. I, I didn't see, unfortunately didn't see that one live, but golly, uh, that, that was, was, that, that was, was a great play. Yeah, dude. Dylan Moore is, uh, I mean, his de- defensively Dylan Moore's phenomenal. It's his bath. That's, uh, that's been the issue this year, at least. Um, and so I, I, uh, I would pick Jared's just because I need to see that more from Jared to get himself more confidence. And so that's what, that's what I like to see. But speaking of that Tuesday game, that's when I wore Oscar the Grouch. We all went, um, and, uh, we got those, those tickets. Shout out to your boy, Maxi. Um, Zach Hobbs, heartbeat Hobbs <laughs> at heartbeat Hobbs. Hobbs. Thanks, Zach. Yes. Thank you, Zach. We, uh, we had a fun time and I, you guys know me and my, uh, my opinion on, on the Astros and Astros fans. And for the most part, I don't like them, but they were the guys that we were, we were in Astros territory, sitting in Astros territory. And we actually had some really good conversations with these guys. And, uh, it was, it was fun sitting and, and talking with them. Two of them, I forget one of the other gentlemen's names, but I remember the other guy because his name was Chris, so that was easy to remember. But shout out to Chris and, and your buddy. They uh, they bought the Monday Mojo Crew some beers, and they came back down, and they're like, hey, boys, like we don't want you to spit on us, so here's some beer. And I was like, oh, all right, we'll, we'll hold the spit. Um, but that was, that was pretty fun, and we had those good conversations and whatnot. Um, I, but, I, uh, that, was, that was a new side of Chris Sobo yeah, that I've yeah. seen. I I, I, I I was scared shit. Well, I wasn't scared <laughs> shitless, but I was I was like, all right, well, what are the odds that Chris Soba gets into some scuffle with an Astros fan tonight? And I, I think to myself, because we're on the third baseline row two, what are the odds that said scuffle gets televised? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they, they were great folks. Um we, th- there was a there was a gal in in the front row, a little bit to the left of of us. That was an Astros fans that fan that was a bodybuilder or a former bodybuilder. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, dude. She was she. We were chirping for like two minutes, very briefly briefly when we first were down there because she was chirping at me for wearing Oscar the Grouch. Yeah, and she was like, and she was like saying like. Like she was like, why are you wearing that? Why are you wearing that? I was like, what do you mean? Like, why am I wearing this? And she goes, oh, just because like you know you hate the Astros, you hate Jose Altuve. I was like, yeah, I hate him. And she's like, you hate him because he's good. I was like, no, that's not the reason I hate him. Like, come on, I, I liked him when he was good. Yeah, yeah, I, I no, totally. Him. I respect. Yeah. Him. I, I was saying, I was like, I used to respect him, but she was just trying, I think, uh, uh, trying to trying to push me around Salty, a little bit huh? and get me upset. Um, she obviously knew why I was wearing it because they cheated. Um, and then shout out to the other two. I know they probably do not listen to this podcast, but there are two other guys on Monday night that wore the uh, wore Oscar the Grouches, and they were all over Twitter. Houston Astros were having a field day with them, especially in that first half of the game. I actually, my phone was getting blown up on Twitter. People were chirping at me asking if that was me in the Oscar the Grouch costumes, and then Astros fans picked up on it. They started tweet at me, be like, "Oh, how's a six burger in the first inning?" And I wasn't replying to any thing but after demos grand salami that's when i dove back into Holy twitter and i was shit. getting back at him i had some other mariners fans on my side getting back at him and it was a i love twitter man i love chirping to people i love getting chirped at and uh it's a lot but <laughs> it's a man, lot, dude, human behavior it. is just fascinating it's i love it man it's so much fun talk that shit you know that's what sports are for man talk some shit uh yeah i i get myself in trouble on the uh on the uh, world wide web <laughs> uh, talking, talking too much and like just just uh taking everything a little bit too personally like i mean the guy uh, we've talked about the mariners facebook group but they're going nuts after this trade deadline and like i'm responding to, to stuff and then going back and reading it and being like okay that was too much <laughs> people people are now coming around though and they're saying you know what because toro's going off and they're like you know what all right this tour guy's pretty damn good you know let's see if this works out for us like, it's just so up and down it's uh, then, you know we very, it's a very bipolar um atmosphere. well yeah and then you but you blow a save and it's like oh how's that graveman trade looking now it's like dude 
hindsight is like, you know, you can just run with anything. Like Toro hits a home run. I could be like, who oh, hell's that Graveman trade going? <laughs> 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 not how baseball uh, works like you can't look at everything in a microscope <laughs> yeah that's but that's enough. what people do that's what people do they use their microscope and that's how they look at it are Evan, we, how, uh, how we how we how we doing in, in vegas uh we doing good you know just uh can still grinding a, can you give us a, a weather report in vegas it's about that time of the podcast yeah so um actually pretty surprising um in vegas during the summertime it's been a very active um thunderstorm lightning uh, season here so like monsoon is monsoon season's pretty big down here so um there it's been 110 here and there but mostly it's been a lot of rain and you know Jesus. i can't complain and all that you know so um sure you can complain uh, it's 110 and raining well no i'll take the rain over the 110 degrees is what i'm saying but oh, it kind of oh, sucks not, so, uh, exclusive yeah, yeah yeah but it kind of sucks um like I wanted to go golfing yesterday at Bears Best, Chris, but I couldn't because it uh it was raining and it was thunderstorms, unfortunately. So I'll make it out there eventually. But um yeah, I'm actually coming back to Seattle uh on Wednesday or Thursday to Monday. Shout out our boy uh, Alex Bates for getting married. So wow. um, yeah, so I'll have to reunite and uh get a beer and all that, the Monday Mojo crew. So um what, what time you what time are you getting in on Thursday? Uh, eleven AM. We golfing? I'm bringing my clubs. Let's go golf, baby. Yeah, Let's yeah. golf on Thursday. Hell yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so it'll be good to be back in Seattle. I haven't been back since uh, Christmas, so um, it's going good. But, um, yeah, still supporting the boys down here and um, just wish, you know. I think with the the Toro trade, I, I like it because, you know, you, Max, you were saying earlier that um, he was kind of batting um, – like mid around mid um 250 or whatever yeah, but well, like, um, like i think it was like 225 area yeah but i guess they were saying that with toro um because the the astros are so stacked with bregman and altuve and they got a really stacked lineup that he did he wasn't able to really no, get a right. lot of uh, a lot of reps in there and i think with the mariners and you already seen him being thrown into the lineups here and there i think um we'll get more opportunities with that so um yeah. i like it so yeah. yeah another part of that trade that's you know just something to throw in is that um, for one, I think great men can be resigned in the off season. I think that he, he obviously loves Seattle. So, um, you know, it's kind of hard to, to get uh, guys to sign in Seattle, but he's already been here. And so he, he, you know, you could definitely see him coming back. And then the other part of that is by taking tour away from the Astros, we don't have to deal with that guy. And hopefully, you know, he, he turns into a star for us instead of what he would have been if, say Correa would have left in the off season. And uh, then, you know, maybe they move Bregman over to shortstop and Toro's their new third baseman. And he's just crushing it. And we're like, how the hell, where'd they get this guy? Like, you know, these, they, it seems like they, uh, they seem to find guys just kind of like the uh, athletics do. But. So, so I, I, I get that last point. But I was about to say, Max, yeah, you had a, you had a nasty. Yeah, I, I, I had a, I had a, what's, what's going I had on? a raised <laughs> eyebrow. My eyebrow went to the moon on that. What, what do you, what do you mean Graveman could re-sign with the Mariners? His contract, he's a free agent at the end of the year. I like, would he, are you saying he wouldn't want to because of the way we treated him? Maybe, but have you ever seen, have you ever seen anyone that, well, Graveman has only been, what, he only played with us for one year or two. Half a year. No, half, half a year. year. Yeah, half we signed year. him, we signed him last December. Right, right. Do you... <laughs> I've just never heard of a, a no, he story. Was on the team. He was on the team on the sixty game. Uh, the twenty twenty. Yeah, I figured he was. Yeah, yes. I think. Yeah, he. Yeah, he was. He was in here with twenty twenty. But have you ever? Um, and where did he play beforehand? The A's. The A's. Oh right. So I just. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense for. Dude, it happens. A team, like, yeah, but a, a team, happens. a team to trade a a a, a pit or any player over to a new team halfway through the season fine but then that so happens to be his uh last uh, um year until he's a free agent and then going back to said team i, I that just seems unlikely but really, I, really well you, you haven't seen that this year with happened. james paxton yeah. you pushed anything in a third <laughs> we did well, that with james paxton did, did, uh, j- j- <laughs> well, I mean, well, how, wait, wait 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 james pat j- james paxton played for the yankees for how many years a year and a half year and a half i, I mean yeah. maybe two years but yeah it was two seasons a year and a half because one was COVID. 
Right. So I just don't see Kendall Graydon being like, oh, that was fun in Houston. I got a ring. So what I would say to help you guys out. What I'll say on that is when we traded Graveman in his exit or not exit interview, but like when he was in Astros uniform the next day on the field, reporters were asking him about the trade. And he was saying like, I'm a guy that I like to build something from scratch, whether that be in baseball, whether that be in life when I'm building other stuff, I like to build stuff from the ground up and see the project till finish. And so if that did ever happen to where at the end of this year, we do want to try and resign Graven. I think that it's not out the window completely. I think that there is a chance that he would come back and he would want to, and not for ownership, not for management, but for the guys on the clubhouse uh, and, and for the team, like he would want to come back and help them get to the spot where they all want to be, which is the playoffs. And they want to be a legitimate contender. And so I could see that where at the end of the year, we do resign him, and he would want to get on. When he got traded, I mean, he was like pretty much crying and crying. you'd see, you'd see all that emotion and yeah, he was upset. Um, he was really, you could, and then, uh, I was reading Ryan Divish's article about like how the team was reacting and um, I guess the clubhouse, they're like slamming bats and they're really upset about it. And, you know, I think um, it, it's more it, like people don't understand that chemistry is a real big thing. And so I think with him wanting to come back and I think Chris, you mentioned in our last episode that he told Jerry, he wanted to help this team get to the playoffs and mm-hmm. make a run. So um, you could see a reunion in the future. Yeah. I mean, you could take it one of two ways. I, I'm not saying that it's probable he's going to come back, but I mean, one way you could look at it is that he's he's pissed off. He feels betrayed. Um, screw the Mariners. I'm not going back there. You know, uh, after everything I did for them, and then they trade me like no way. Or you could look at it as he has he has some time to settle down. He loved it here. He loved the guys and will likely be in a better position to win next year. And he he's he already knows the area. He knows the clubhouse and he knows the trajectory that we're on. And he probably sees it as a, a spot where he can go and uh, get to the playoffs, especially if we haven't been. And he knows that feeling of the the Mariners that the Mariners fans have and the energy. It's like he might want to be a part of getting us back to the playoffs for the first time. Like so. he wants to see that project through. He wants to see the project through. He wants to see how it ends. I mean, you know, and these players, yeah, they're they're I'm I'm sure that they're upset. And uh, but on the other hand, they get that it's a business. And if you give him, um, you know, the rest of the year and then most of the offseason to kind of let those uh, emotions subside, I don't I don't think he's going to hold it against Jerry. Like, how the heck could you trade me? Like, uh, you know, it's like, dude, I'm doing my job. I'm not putting emotions into this. You know that I, you know, I'm sure Jerry lo- likes him as a person and likes, you know, what he did for the clubhouse and what he did for the team. He's not trading him because he's a bad player. He's trading him because uh it was a nice piece to get us a, a long-term piece and then you can get him back. So he thinks, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it could. Yeah. Happen. Yeah. I, I, mean, yeah, I don't no, think, right. I don't think Jerry's going to, Hey, we're going to trade you. Then we're definitely going to try and resign you. I don't think that's, I mean, that's not what I mean, but... process, but if the opportunity is there, he'll, he'll, <laughs> right. he'll open the door. Right. Right. Hey, uh, Evan, you win again this week for picks to hit. Just lock oh it up God. again. How, how many points did you I, I get? Don't... He had like at least 18. Well, Seager, yeah, had a home run. He only struck out one time this whole week, which is surprising because he usually is hit or miss. But that dude, that that bunt for an RBI was I, I don't it. know if you I don't know if you guys saw that, yep. but it was yeah, and Chris or Soba, you especially would love this because you've always been a huge proponent of okay, where where are the infielders placed right now? how much of a veteran is, is this guy and how, and how, you know, what's the element of surprise um, factor, right. With a guy like Seager who definitely is, can be clutch, right. Can absolutely. Uh, His um, MO is clutch, man. He, 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 right. he's, yeah. With like runners in scoring position, he's batting over 350. But what I, I, you know, I'm pretty sure there was two outs, right. Like it just was like one of those plays that we want to see more of that, uh, you know, is way more creative. And yeah. show you know it, from from watching the game, it's like wow, these guys do. They're playing to win with a play like that. But I, I will say really briefly before we go into picks that picks the hit. Have you guys noticed that the hardest thing in baseball, for whatever reason, seems to be lay down a freaking decent bunt? Oh yeah, for sure. That's why. I mean, that's a big reason that the shifts become you know, so exaggerated, like they don't even have a guy semi on like, you know, the third baseline. It's like the third baseman is playing like as a shortstop and then everyone's shifted to the right and they're leaving the whole left side open because they're just daring you to bunt. And they're like, you can't do it. You're not going to do it. Three out of four times I I watch a major league bunt 
it goes horribly. <laughs> you know, like, uh, and, and especially, and especially when you're intentionally laying down a sacrifice button too, right? It's one thing to pull out a squeeze and say, whoops, gotcha. I'm going now. <laughs> Catch me if you can. But if, if you're intentionally laying down a bunt with like a, uh, an, uh, you know, a no count, right? Like, and you fell off the first one and, and then you pop, pop up, up the second. second one, right? Like, I mean, that was one thing that we were taught, at least in the, in the last level of baseball that I played, that we were taught to do uh, without fail, right? And you would think that professional ball players know how to lay down an effective bunt, but I don't know. I just thought I'd have found it funny. I was wondering if my, you guys felt the same in my baseball career, which was not long. It didn't go into high school. So don't, don't get anything twisted here folks. But with my baseball career, I went four for four once in one game, all four were bunts. I was a bunted <laughs> savage, man. I, I went four for four with bunts. They weren't limited to singles. Like they're throwing errors. I think I got a triple on one, uh, but yeah. bunting, it should be utilized more. It is difficult, I guess uh, for, for these MLB guys, but with the, sh- shift on it should seems like it should be easier and i like seeing seeker do it i love it i love seeing him lay down that that bunt with the two outs and jp coming in to score get back to the pickums i think soba i'm not sure who i got 15 points with with uh viva okay then you definitely came in second yeah who'd you have can you guys remind me who i had (laughs) Uh, i'm not very good I had Turan, Luis Torrens, and I think he got like eight or nine points. Like he was pretty good. Max, I, th- I, th- I think I had Mitch. <laughs> I think you did have Mitch. You had the second second pick. Um, yeah. I can tell you what he got. You didn't look it before. If you didn't look before, and that one's on you, big guy. Yeah, no, it is on me. I'll take the L on this one and go fourth again and probably not win. So you guys <laughs> do your picks. Oh, also, wait, 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 wait. Hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Also, before we do that, I, uh, this week isn't Jake Fraley coming back? Yeah, I think Bowers is probably gonna get sent. Thank, that's what I was about to ask. Is, is, who's going down? I want it to be Jake. I want it to be Jake Bowers, and he's, he's he just reminds me of uh, Seth Smith. You guys remember Seth Smith? Seth Smith oh my wasn't god, a bad hitter. no, dude, he wasn't a terrible hitter, but he was. Whoa, whoa, good. whoa! Yes, he was. He wasn't. He was not good. <laughs> He just he, looked he like was, he looks like a freaking forty year old male delivery. Yeah, man. I was dude. Outfit. I was about to say Seth uh, Smith seemed like. The awkward kid in school that, and you know, there uh, there are a lot of awkward kids in school that go on to do great things. But Seth Smith's was not baseball. Yeah, look what you're doing right now. Uh, he was. A, oh, he was you like, asshole! <laughs> he was a true platoon player, and I can't remember which side of the plate it was that he hit well against. But like, I think he kind of mashed lefties or mashed uh, righties. I don't know. I don't know. He, he wasn't bad. Yeah, he did that- something, but he, he, <laughs> he didn't mash. Jack I'm going to look. I'm gonna <laughs> he, look did, he did mash Jack. Oh, okay. He didn't do not, any mashing, dude. I'm not saying. <laughs> I think like, he did more mashing than uh, Jake Bowers, though. I think he had Jake Bowers, does, Jake Bowers has three home runs. He doesn't match. Yeah, I mean, I think Seth yeah. Smith batted like 260 with like, you know, 18 home runs. I'm going to look it up right now. Look okay. it up. Look you, it up. You, right you look, you, you you look up those sad trip. statistics and then get back to us. Uh, for now, um, Evan came away with the win for li- this past week's uh, pick to hit. Uh, Evan had Kyle Seeger go freaking figure. Kyle played in Arlington this week. We all know that he dominates in Arlington. So good for Evan. He seems to be uh, running some sort of monopoly or some sort of insider trading. <laughs> no, operation. I wish he started doing money for this and I'd be a rich yeah, man. No um, kidding. Um, yeah. So for my pick this week, um, I'm going to buy into the hype and I'm going to go a Toro this week. I think, yeah. So I think that, um, you know, we've seen some potential with him and with those uh, few home runs. And I love the way he was swinging the bat in Texas. And now that he's got a fresh start being with the Mariners and getting all this playing time, I think he's ready to just take it to another level. So I'm going Toro this week. That's who I was going to go with. Oh, sucks yeah, to bastard. suck, Chris. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Jared, man. I want to see Jared do something crazy. Oof. I want to see him break out of this monster slump that he's had with being in the MLB. He can't even call it a slump. I just want to see him get started um, and stay on the right track. And he's on the, he got on the right track against the Astros. And I think maybe with the with a shorter outfield in, in uh, at the Yankee Stadium when we go there after Tampa Bay, uh, I think something good could happen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with our boy Jared Kelnick. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take Mitch Haniger. 
And uh, I just think he's going to, he's, we're going to need our best player to be our best player, if that makes any mm-hmm. sense. So mm-hmm. uh, I got Mitchie. Uh, I think, I think he's going to, uh, he, he had a little bit of a down week for, for Max, but I think he bounces back. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter who I pick because they will have a down week. So well, pick a crappy player. Yeah, no, exactly. Let's pick. Yeah. Let me pick someone that has no, 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 no. get a good pick. Um, I mean, it's between Jake Fraley and uh, Kyle Seeger. Do I go old reliable or do I go? Don't, don't discount a uh, Ty France. Yeah. Don't discount, I'm, I'm, Ty I'm, France. I'm, don't I'm discount JP I, Crawford. I, dude. Yes. I, I'm well, okay. Good point. Yeah, you guys left me some, but I, I will say I'm I haven't really been a big fan of Ty France lately. I, I think he's been sl- I, I think other than the home run, the game. Yeah, I was just about to run, say just, okay, yeah, that, that's fine. He came up clunge once and he should be doing a whole lot more of that, but he's not. I think so, he's batting pretty good there, Maxi, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> I just want him, I, I want him to be the best player on the team, like he at like he has the potential to be, but he's not slugging, but his average is is pretty pretty good over the last uh yeah. month or so. But fine, anyways, fine. Uh give me JP uh Crawford. He's been hitting the ball well. He didn't have a really good series against the uh against the Rangers, but he's especially today on Sunday, uh in today's loss in the second straight walk-off home run. Uh he was um, he was lasering the ball and I think he is ready to come out of this slump. Uh, he's going to find some grass instead of uh, leather. And I'm going to go with JP J. Crawford this week. Speaking of uh, that game today against the Rangers, JP Crawford, Mitch Haniger and Kyle Seeger went one for 13 today. That ain't cutting it. That Good ain't job. cutting it. That ain't cutting shit. So uh, we need to see a bit more from them. We need to see a bit more from those those uh best players on our team if we want to be good the best players got to perform um so we'll see kind of what happens with that but i'm feeling good i think i think my boy jk is going to do some things this week yeah fair yeah. enough i mean we, we need all these guys like it'd be nice if all of us had at 15 16 points and it was close because this uh starting with the rays it's going to be a really really tough road trip and we didn't get it off started uh the way we wanted to so Let's go take uh, let's go take two from the Rays and split with the Yankees and get back home. What if we sweep I, the Ra- what if we sweep the Rays again? Yeah, I was just gonna say either dude, I, I either want I want to sweep <laughs> one of these teams. I do, but I don't. Who, think I mean, happen. who doesn't? Right? Who no, doesn't? I understand. I'm more of a realist too. The great thing is, though, fellas and, and listeners out there, we have uh, what seven straight days of, or do we have a break this week at no. all? No, we got we, seven we games, have, baby. I think, I, Chris, so I think I know where you're going or where I'm going with this. We have seven straight days of early baseball. So that means we have four o'clock games at the latest. And then we, on what, on Wednesday, we'll wake up to a 10 o'clock game. And Sunday, we'll wake up to a 10 o'clock game. Nice. Am I right in that? Yeah, right? no, you're that's very pretty right. good. You're very, that's very good. I like that. Because I like there, that, uh, that viewpoint. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing like going to bed directly after a seven o'clock Mariner game and losing a walk-off game right and then you have nightmares and then you wake up and then you're in a shitty mood before or, o'clock, or you on know, the opposite, you have time or on to the get over or on the opposite side of the spectrum there's also nothing like why well, after watching the mariners after a seven o'clock game and having the bit one of the best comebacks you've ever seen and then not sleeping for the next four hours because you're just re-watching replays um so it's nice that these games will be earlier so if something crazy like that does happen or something bad like that does happen uh we'll have a little bit more time to get over it and get to get to bed at a decent hour something but, uh, crazy is gonna happen let's just hope it, it goes uh the mariners way uh, i don't want to see my blown saves we need to get back on the walking off teams instead of getting mm-hmm. walked off on uh so let's go what do you and want, also, <laughs> I, I don't want to forget <laughs> to let these people know to follow us on Twitter uh, at Monday underscore Mojo. I want more followers, and I'm tweeting when I can during these games. I feel like I got some good tweets, so get out there and follow me. By okay. the way, I saw that um, that like guy reach out to us on um, Instagram about like uh, wants to get uh, Gary Cor- or uh, whatever that Gary Hill mm-hmm. on the show. What happened? What's the story behind that? Oh, so dude. also yeah. another another thing that but when we were on the way to the game on Tuesday. Uh, me, Zweifel, Max, and Jack. I was driving, and we were going through downtown Seattle, and <laughs> we got our windows down. We're bumping music, getting excited, and I looked to my left, and there's a car driving next to us, and homeboy driving the car. We got a Seattle Mariners hat on. Both of our windows are down. He sees us. 
you know, moving and grooving. And I'm like, yo, what up, my guy? Go Mariners. He goes, yeah, let's go, Evans, baby. Can't wait. Sucks about Graven. This is after Monday, you know, t- on Tuesday. And we're like, yeah, yeah. And we're just chit chatting at a red light. And I'm like, are you a big Evans fan? He goes, oh, I fucking love him. And I was like, all right, my guy. No, here's uh, we got a, I got a Monday Mojo card for you. So I threw it to him throughout the windows. It went onto the street. So I opened my door and got out of my car while, uh, while I was at that stoplight. And I'm the driver. And I get the business card and I hand it to him. And he's like, yeah, I'm brothers with Gary Hill. And I'm like, oh, no way, my guy. Can you get him on the brother podcast? Brother-in-law. 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 Thank you. Brother-in-law with Gary Hill. And I was like, can you get him on the podcast? And he goes, dude, I'll see what I can do. And so that's what you you saw, Evan. You saw him uh, re- yeah. reach out to us on Instagram. And he said he's uh, he's talked with Gary. And Gary's got, a, obviously, a very busy schedule. But um, potential guests that we could have on. Thanks again for listening, uh, guys. We love you. Tell your friends. Uh, Keep watching the Mariners. We've got some intense baseball. So stick around. Tune in. Root Sports. Or radio. Listen to Rick Riz. Just give uh, give us a chance. We're looking forward to seeing what we can do. 